Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm going to show you how to wrap your motorcycle or ATV exhaust using Lex Heat Wrap. There's a few different reasons you'd be wrapping your motorcycle or ATV exhaust. Could be performance, protection, looks, or any combination of these three things. Now as far as performance goes, this wrap maintains a higher exhaust gas temperature that helps with scavenging, meaning that the exhaust is going to exit quicker, allowing more of the fresh air fuel mixture to enter the engine. But the main reason we're going to be wrapping this exhaust is for added protection. Now this header here, it doesn't come with a heat shield and we want some added protection to keep it from burning our pants or boots. And the wrap also looks good as well. So whatever reason you're wrapping your exhaust, the process will be similar for all machines, whether it's ATV or motorcycle. Now this machine here we're going to show you on is a TRX 450ER. It only has one head pipe, but if your machine has a two into one or a four into one header, we'll explain how to do that as well. To do this job, we're going to use some common hand tools, rags, safety glasses, and rubber gloves. And then as far as consumables go, we're using some penetrating lube, some anti-seize, you'll need exhaust gaskets, and then we're using the Lex exhaust heat wrap. This comes in kits with the steel ties, or you can buy all of these parts individually, and you can get it in both two inch width or one inch width. We're going with the one inch, and just for an example of how much you'd actually need, a twin cylinder street bike would need two 50 foot one inch rolls. The first thing we need to do before we remove our header is soak our wrap in some water. And it's really important to wear rubber gloves. That way you don't get any of that fiberglass material into your fingers. When you soak this, you want to kind of separate the wrap just a little bit. And that way it gets soaked entirely. Soaking this wrap completely is going to allow us to wrap it around our header tightly and it's going to make for a better install. All right, now while that's soaking, we can now remove our head pipe. All right, now that we have the header removed, if you had any burned rubber from your boots or anything like that, you want to scrape that off. And we want this head pipe to be perfectly clean before we start the wrap. Once this thing's cleaned up, we can use some soft jaws in our vise to help hold it still while we do our wrap, or you can have a friend help hold it, whichever one works best for you. All right, now I've pulled the wrap out of the bucket, and what I'm going to do is start with a clean end on this wrap. So I'm just going to use some scissors and cut that off. And then I'm going to get a little bit of length pulled out on this wrap. And what we're going to do, we're going to fold this end under, so that way later on it doesn't fray. And I'm just going to start with a 45 degree angle on this and fold it under. And then we're going to wrap this around. I'm going to pull this tight and we're starting towards this end. And the reason we're doing that is we want to work from the back to the front. And if we start back here, there's not going to be as much debris that gets caught in this area. All right. Now, once I've started my second wrap, I'm going to use this wire tie and we'll clamp down this first wrap. And keep in mind, when we're wrapping this, we need to overlap each wrap by at least a quarter of an inch. Now the stainless steel tie, I'm just gonna get it as tight as I can by hand right now. And we are gonna tighten this down a little bit more later, but that's gonna be after we're done with the entire wrap. And keep in mind that as you go through the process, you want to make sure each wrap is pulled tight. So right here we've got a bend and on this bend you're going to have more overlap on the inside and less of an overlap on the outside. So you want to maintain that quarter inch overlap on the outside and especially on this one right here it's going to be quite a bit different. At this point we need to move the pipe in the vise to finish wrapping it. And it's gonna be helpful to have a friend move it and readjust it in the vise. The 
Again, this is that point where it's really critical to maintain that quarter inch overlap on this outer edge. All right, once you're as far up on the flange as you wanna go, what you do is cut a little bit of extra length off here. We'll do our final wrap. And right at the very end, we're gonna fold the last inch of this over and tuck it underneath, and that way it doesn't fray out. And again, we'll take our stainless steel tie. We're gonna tighten this down by hand for now. All right, once you have this tie as tight as you can just by hand, it needs to go just a little bit tighter. So how we're gonna do that, we're gonna cut just about quarter inch to half an inch away from where this sits, from where it actually clamps. We're gonna cut that off. Once the end is cut off, what we're gonna do is take the end right here. We're gonna fold it away from the tie where it actually clamps. That's gonna pull it just a little bit tighter. We'll flatten that out. Then we're gonna do it one more time. And then once you've done it twice, this clamp is gonna be on there solid. And we're gonna flatten that out to you. Now we'll go ahead and do the same steps on this other tie. Make sure that's all the way tight by hand. Now at this point, this pipe is ready to go back onto our machine. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you how to wrap either a two into one or four into one header. Now, if you have a two into one pipe, then what you're gonna do, you'll wrap this first pipe all the way up to the flange, just like we did on this other pipe right here. But if it's a four into one, you'll wrap three of them that way. And then on the last one, what you're gonna do, you'll start back here. We're gonna wrap this pipe the same way we would anything else. We're just gonna overlap the other pipes as well. And we're gonna overlap about two inches past where these other wraps start. And once we're there, then we'll switch to just this single pipe that's the last one. Go all the way up to the flange and then make sure that all the clamps are tight. The next thing I'm gonna do is replace our exhaust header gasket and we need to remove this old one i'm just using a screwdriver to help pop this out and then to get this new one installed we can use a little bit of grease to help hold it in place while we install the header and when we install the header we're also going to use a little bit of anti-seize on these studs These header mounting nuts, it's a good idea to torque them down. Every machine's gonna be a little different, so you'll have to find that in your model specific service manual. And after you run the machine, it might be a good idea to double check that they're still tight. All right, the next step is for us to take this ATV outside. We're gonna run the machine, and while this warms up, there's gonna be a lot of steam coming off that header since it's still wet. So that's totally normal, and this wrap, it actually is gonna lighten up in color, so don't worry about that. And once this has been through a heat cycle, you can actually spray some silicone spray on it, and it's gotta be the high temp, and it's gonna help extend the life of that wrap. And that's all there is to installing this heat wrap. If you need this or any other parts for your machine, check out our website. We have a lot of different options on there. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more helpful content. Thanks for watching.